Hello everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning into my channel. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead and cleaned up a bunch of things around this application here. Had a, some good conversation around clean code tips, so if you missed it, I'll link a card in the top right. If you are brand new here, we have been creating this little e-commerce project here. We have a few different user interactions. Um, you know, we have adding to the cart, we have a primitive cart here, some profile that hasn't been built out. So still in the middle of building this stuff out, but we are using, you know, modern tools inside of Android, um, you know, a Redux pattern. So uh, a lot of interesting stuff here that's been pretty helpful. In today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about layouts, create some kind of a, um, a quantity UI element that we can put on all of the items in the cart here to kind of allow the user to denote how many of something they wanted, right? How many backpacks they wanted, how many t-shirts they wanted, etc. Um, taking a look at, you know, just some kind of little UI like this, kind of going for something like that where we have a text view and we have two different, you know, ways for the user to interact, to add or remove uh, from that quantity. And uh, so we'll just hop right on into it. Let me close this so we can get some more uh, real estate here. And what I think is also going to be worth it um, sure, we can just put it straight in this XML here, but I do think that it's worth it to kind of talk about the include tag. So this is our layout file that we have currently for what we see in the um, in the UI there and for, for the cart. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and create another layout here. Uh, let's see. Just gone ahead and named it layout quantity selector. Similarly to how you might have fragment underscore, you know, X, Y, Z, or, you know, view holder underscore epoxy model underscore, whatever. I like having the word layout here when it's a layout file that's intended to be included. Um, and we'll get to that in a little bit, but it's because the layout field is one of the ones that, um, that you have to specify when you include something here. So I'm going to go ahead and just put together a UI that looks a little bit like this, and then we can chat about it real quick. Okay, and welcome back folks. So went ahead and just implemented a little bit of a layout here. We have a constraint layout. We have a shapeable image view. Um, so we can just get a rounded corner. Actually, it might not even make sense because we have just a rounded icon in there. But um, regardless, basically you just have an image view. We have a text view there in the middle and then we just have another image view here. Um, and as we can see, the final product is something that looks like that on the right. And um, yeah. Pretty bare bones, right? Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So we can go ahead and actually update uh, and use that inside of this other layout and or any other layout that we care for here. And we can make use of the include tag as I mentioned earlier. So we can do include and then the one, uh, I guess, attribute that you need to specify here um, or the most important one is the layout attribute. And this allows you to specify which layout you actually want. And this is part of the reason why I have the uh, prefix for the file be layout underscore quantity selector in this case because it's attached to that layout uh, field. When we go ahead and just click include here we can see that it overlaps you know here it doesn't really look all that great um, but we can go ahead and modify that. So if we want to end up having it you know somewhere down here I would imagine that kind of makes sense uh, we basically just want to fix up some constraints here. So. Uh, let's do constraint start to start of the image view and let's say constraint bottom to bottom of the parent and we'll notice here that this thing hasn't moved it's very very difficult to see actually let me see if I could just yeah if I go ahead and just remove the text there you can see that this thing is still up here it's not really going anywhere it's not really listening to these um, you know constraints that we've gone ahead and set here and I believe the reason for that here is because we have not specified the width and the uh, height here. So if we go ahead and specify width, and then if we specify the layout height as well of wrap content, now immediately it will start to listen to us. It will start to recognize in this layout how it should be, um, I guess, handled. And then uh, we can start playing with the constraints here. So let me just go ahead and put this back. Um, and then, yes, so we don't want start to, end, uh, we want start to end of, sorry. And then, all right, and there we have it. Uh, we start it at the same position that this title starts at, and then we constrain the top and bottom to the delete icon, uh, just kind of aligning it there. And so we can play around with a little bit of the sizes here. That does look maybe a little bit large, but it's not really the end of the world. Uh, but now we do have a layout included here. The other thing that we can do is we can actually set an ID on this view, the, uh, just something called quantity view. 
um, and then we can go ahead and basically be done with this uh, implementation here. So the include layout allows us to basically just, as it suggests there, include a particular layout inside of this one. You can kind of see some resemblance to the compose mentality here, but this is just the you know old school XML structure and way of doing things. Um, there is another tag here called merge that'll do something very similar, but I don't want to talk about that in this video here. Uh, outside of that though, we can actually just start utilizing this inside of our epoxy model. So here we are, here is the cart item epoxy model. This has a handful of information here that you know is already set up to kind of handle this interaction. Um, and, then, and then we can see here that it is attached to this layout that we just modified there. So uh, what we can do here is we can actually reference that quantity text uh, quantity view, sorry. And if we look at the type here, it's of type layout quantity selector binding. And so because we've actually uh, incorporated view binding into this project, and we have here this layout called layout underscore quantity selector, when we end up trying to reference that particular view, we can actually uh, do so via the view binding info um, you know, like we normally would. So it's really, really helpful stuff. This is basically a view binding that exists within a view binding. Um, and then you can go ahead and just work with it as you would here, right? So we can just simply say, you know, quantity text view dot text equals nine. Sure, dot two string. And if we go ahead and rerun things here, the quantity amount there is going to be equal to nine as you would expect. Um, so obviously we're going to need to do a little bit of work here to incorporate the idea of quantity into our store and into our entire application. But once we get that, we could very easily probably append that or add that info into our UI product. And then this would just be, you know, UI product dot quantity or something along those lines. So if we go ahead and add a few items to the cart here, we can see that we do have nine there. Hmm. Where are our image view. They are there. I just use tools instead of the actual um, app. So we'll do app source compat and we'll do that. Uh, we'll just go ahead and take that info and we will put it here as well. Um, and that should solve our problem. We could probably go ahead and just rerun things. Yep. Okay. There we go. We got it. And so obviously the buttons are not hooked up here. We will need to change that. I do think we should shrink this in size as well because it's getting a little too large. Um, so let me do a little bit of cleanup. All right, folks. And after playing around with it a little bit, we've kind of modified some things. I think it looks pretty good. Again, I'm not a designer, but I like the way it's shaping up. Um, we went ahead and just applied a little background drawable, a background tint. We gave it some padding here to just kind of look, um, you know, a little a little more friendly, um, not necessarily as rigid as it did before. As you see, when we click here, we do get a nice little ripple animation. That is because on the, the image views, we have the selectable item background borderless. Um, it kind of really just kind of gives it that material theme before material was around. Um, and so you can kind of apply that to particular views that don't have that inherently. Um, and then, yeah, as we saw earlier, accessing it in the code here, Pretty straightforward, you know, we can just simply run an apply block on the overall uh, binding of this entire thing. Of course, we are gonna have to not have something hard coded uh, and then handle the clicks here for the plus and the minus on the different products. But, you know, we can do that. I'm thinking we'll do that in the next episode because that's a little bit more, you know, architecture, a little bit more data layer, that kind of stuff. And I wanted to keep this to the UI layer. So um, short and sweet, hopefully it was uh, a little bit enjoyable, a little interesting to see. If you are brand new, please consider subscribing and not miss out on future content as we continue building this out. If you are returning, I really appreciate it. Thank you for the continued support. Let's drop the code 1234 in the comments. Let me know you made it all the way through. Let me know how I'm doing. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.